Hi guys, so today we're going to continue with our lecture on chapter 6 which is developing and managing product. In this particular chapter, we're basically going to learn two things which is the first one, new product development process and the second one, product life cycle. Before we go to the process of developing a new product, let's look at the six types of new product. So for organization to create a new product, they can fall under this uh, six uh, classification or types of new product that they created. Number one, the product which is new to the world, which this is the totally new invention whereby it is not a modification, it is, it is not a improvement, an improvement or it's not an innovation from the previous creation but rather totally a new uh, creation or new technology that has been uh, created. Okay, um, Today or even for the past 5 to 10 years, there are not much products that are being created and fall under this uh, category of new to the world. Uh, previously, when Alexander Graham Bell, for example, first created or invented the telephone, that is new product to the world in that particular time. But today, if you create a new telephone or an innovation of an uh, improvement of new phone, it is no longer called the product which is new to the world. Okay, uh, perhaps when let's say there are some conspiracy conspiracy that says that the coronavirus is actually an invention of a new virus so perhaps that particular thing is considered as a biological weapon kind of thing so that could be a new to the world whereby there's no such product or uh, has been created before uh, why i can give you an example it's like a drone okay previously or um, there is no such thing as drone like whoever thought of having something uh, attached a flying um, without any pilot okay on that particular device Okay, but rather being controlled. Uh, so drone can be considered as product that is new to the world. Second types of new product is new to the firm, which um, it may not be a new product to the world, but to that particular firm, it is the first time when they actually create that product, which they first time add that particular uh, product to their organization for example when apple iphone yeah, uh, apple company um, created or invented their new and first ever smartwatch okay so the watch itself is not a new product to the world but rather uh, to apple company they have not produced a watch before so when they add uh, an iWatch to their company, okay, they created that and they produced that, so that was considered as a uh, product that is new to the firm. Number three is uh, an addition to existing product lines, which previously you already have that items in the product line, but you want to add a new one to the line. For example, in this picture, you can see Maggie, which is an old me. Oat, yeah. Previously, Maggie, they never produced this particular uh, flavor or um, product, which is uh, the noodles that is made from oat. So when they add this particular oat me to their existing instant noodle, so this oat me can be considered as an, an addition to existing product line by Maggie. Number four is an improvement to existing product. So this is many, a lot of company do this, okay? Basically, when they added new version or new improvement or new modification, better modification of the existing product, like for example, again, Apple, they produce a lot of iPhones. So as they produce iPhone 11, so iPhone 11 is actually an improvement of their existing iPhone uh, 10 or from the previous iPhone 10 from the previous iPhone 8, okay? So it's an improvement of the existing product that they produce. Number five is repositioning. Okay, repositioning is basically you don't actually add a new product, but rather you want people to see it from different perspective, okay? So Amazon, previously when they first started, okay, Amazon is actually a, an online platform that sells only books, okay? But later on, as they... Um, add okay some of their 
uh, items not only limited to books okay amazon has actually um, successfully repositioned their brand okay their company to a platform that sells everything okay as you can see in the previous chapter amazon has the largest number one uh, brand equity in the world yeah and number six types of new product is a cost reduction product a cost reduction product is basically um, not to say an improvement to existing but rather than the uh, simplification of existing new uh, existing product you simplify or you reduce some elements from the existing product then you can reduce the cost of the product so that is called cost reduction products unlike improvement you make it better but the cost reduction products normally you make it simpler or you make it less functioning uh, from the previous ones example of a cost reduction uh, product is again by Apple when they produce their iPhone 4SE okay which this particular phone is actually a, a cost reduction of iPhone 5 yeah they uh, make this particular phone uh, simpler okay uh, with cheaper selling price okay but the uh, core functions are still there okay so these are the six types of new product now let's move on this is very important which the new product development process so this is when you are talking about creating product which is new to the world okay or even uh, uh, it can be a uh, product that is uh, improvement of the previous one okay uh, the, it involves eight steps from idea generation to commercialization okay so let's look at each of these steps step number one idea generation it is a systematic search for new product ideas okay idea generation is basically you wanted to generate the idea of creating a new product okay so the sources of new product ideas could be from internal or external if it's internal it will be normally in the company's own formal research and development the management and also the staff of the company or some of the entrepreneurial programs within the company itself so internal is inside the company okay where they make use of some brainstorming among the staff okay the management itself have some ideas their own scientists or engineers from their research and development okay those are from internal sources well external sources are those sources outside the organization or the company okay this includes um, some feedbacks from the customer or some ideas from the customers okay or by looking at your competitors what your competitors are doing so you might have some ideas of how you can uh, create a better product than your competitors okay your distributors suppliers and also some of any other outside design firms itself so idea generation basically you just to, wanted to generate an idea just an idea of what you wanted to create Second step is idea screening. Uh, from the first step just now, when you have the idea generation, you already generate the idea. Okay, you have some a lot, not some, uh, maybe a lot of ideas. So from those ideas, you are going to the second step by screening them. You wanted to identify the good ideas and drop the poor ones. Okay, by using this RWW screening framework, which is is it real? Can we win? or and also is it worth doing that particular idea by turning it into a product okay so by looking at is it real or not can you it actually can be done or not okay is it realistic all right next by answering the questions when you create that particular new product can we win in a way that will people buy the product can it be so will people actually accept okay the product or not and thirdly is it worth of you doing by uh, answering the question whether um, how much investment or how much capital money needed in order for you to produce that product and will it re give you a good return in investment right um, in the way that will it be profitable or not the third step 
is concept development and testing. So you already select, okay, basically uh, the idea that you wanted to do based on the second step just now. So this is when you think of the product idea, okay, there is an idea for possible product that the company can see itself offering to the market. So uh, it is a detailed version of the idea stated in meaningful consumer terms. When you do this concept development also, you will actually create product image, okay, where uh, how you want the consumer to perceive the actual or the potential product. And then you do the concept testing, which refers to testing new product concept with groups of target consumers. Still, in this concept development and testing, you do not have the real product yet. It is still just an idea, okay, an idea. And then in concept testing, you are asking some target consumers, okay, uh, a pilot group, for example, uh, and ask them whether they can actually accept the idea of having that kind of product or not, okay. If everything is good, then you can move on to the fourth step which is marketing strategy development okay here you are going to uh, find out okay and create initial marketing strategy for introducing the product to the market which includes description of your target market the value proposition as well as sales and profit goals basically here in marketing strategy development you are uh, concentrated on how you want uh, the customers to benefits, all right, to benefits the product that you create. Then you do a business analysis, which involves a review of sales, costs, and profit projections to find out whether they will satisfy the company's objective or not. If yes, then you can move on to the next step, which is product development. So this is when it involves the creation and testing of one or more physical version okay which you typically created the first prototype of the product okay and normally it requires an increase in investment because in this particular step you already bought the technology the machineries and acquired this um, expertise right especially the engineers and technology to create the actual product and shows whether the product idea can really turn into a workable product or not the test marketing, okay, so can be moved on after you have done the prototype. So you already have the actual product, now you want to test market, whether people want to buy or not. Can people actually want, uh, uh, can people actually accept that particular real product when it is actually made? So test marketing is a stage at which product and marketing program are introduced into more realistic marketing setting. And it provides the marketers with experience in testing the product and entire marketing program before the full introduction. So this is actually almost the uh, second final step. Yeah. So you just want to find uh, more people to actually test whether they accept the concept of that, but not the concept, the actual product or not. Okay. Uh, look at this particular example by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah? So Kentucky Fried Chicken, they tried to create a new product which is called the Kentucky Grilled Chicken. Okay. So before this, people already know and uh, accept the fact that KFC, KF, C, F means fried chicken. So now they wanted to create something new which is grilled chicken. By uh, having this kind of um, concept, are you unthinking what I'm what I'm unthinking and um, the taste of unfried side of KFC. So when they sell this particular um, grilled chicken to a realistic marketing setting, perhaps they only choose a few uh, KFC stores, yeah, and see whether people actually accept and also wanted to try and buy or not the Kentucky grilled chicken. Turns out that people do not accept the fact that Kentucky is a grilled chicken. It has to be fried chicken. So that is when the Kentucky grilled chicken fail yeah, in the test marketing. And that's why until now, we don't have uh, any chicken which is grilled by Kentucky. 
So the market testing can be done three ways, yeah? Standard market, controlled test market, and also simulated test market. I want you to Google this, okay, and read more on this particular three types of test by yourself, yeah? So consider this as your homework, right? Go find out what is standard test markets, controlled test market, and also simulated test markets. Next, if all of these uh, are pass, yeah? When you do the test market, it pass. Um, you can move on to the final step of this new product development process, which is commercialization. Okay, so commercialization is actually you are introducing the new product to your market. This is an official launch, all right? So before you do the launching, you need to, of course, think of when you want to launch it, where, and plan on the market rollout. So the market rollout is when you launch a new product or service in the market and done in batch wise or some area wise. Like you first wanted to uh, launch in United States and after that it will go to the uh, European countries, okay, and then, then it will move on to the Asian countries and so on, okay. Or it can be based on uh, some other, uh, what they call it, cost and also effort which is usually done in a progressive manner we start with uh, an area whereby uh, cheapest to the country or sorry to the uh, production uh, factory or production area okay then it will move on to the bigger uh, areas and throughout the whole uh, period of that particular commercialization then it will reach the whole world like for example when apple first no, Apple first. Apple launch every time when they launch their latest version of iPhone, right? Then they will plan the market roll away by, okay, customer will will get this particular phone uh, in United, United States first. Okay, it's always start with the, the United States because it started from there. Okay, then uh, people in the European country will start to get it a uh, certain month, right? And then a Asian uh countries will start to get it after a few other months, right? So that is when they plan for the market roll out, okay? Now, moving on to the second part of this chapter, which is on product life cycle, okay? Product life cycles involve four stages, okay? Basically, the introduction, first stage, growth is the second stage, maturity is the third stage, and decline stage is the fourth one. Before the introduction, are those what we have learned just now, which is the stage of product development. The moment company launch, okay, the commercialization, the commercialization of the product just now, so that is when the product is being introduced, okay, which is the first stage here. Second, later on, over a period of time, the product grow into the growth stage and then the maturity and decline stage. So on uh, this particular graph, okay, typically is the typical um, product life cycle uh, lines, yeah, which you have profit lines and also sales lines. That shows that over the introduction uh, period, okay, the sales and also profits are at its lowest, okay. And then at the growth stage, sales are growing really, really fast. Okay, you can see that the uh, graph is growing so fast. And then you start to earn profit at the end of introduction stage. Okay, as your product growing further up, you start to earn the profit. Because of course, when you produce your product, okay, there's no sales here. So when there's no sales, you will not be able to get any profit perhaps. Um, you incur a lot of losses and investment are very, very high. So uh, that's why it is important to make sure that when you launch your product, the sales grow quickly, okay? And you don't want a very long period of introduction here. What you want is a very long period of growth because you see that the sales are going really, really fast and you get a lot of profits here. At the maturity stage, typically your sales is at its peak. You, you will see that there's no more growing up after this maturity stage, but rather towards the end of the maturity stage, your sales are going down, okay? And when it goes down further, then you your product is now in the cycle of declining, okay? So let's look at different types of uh, lines, yeah? Where you can have um, a style kind of product, which the 
uh, lines are fluctuates like this fashion it is growing very fast and later on it uh, takes slower time for maturity and then quickly decline while fats are growing faster it's just like trending you know today it's trending and tomorrow no more no more uh, trending so that is like fats but typically most products are having the one that I show you just now now let's look at what happened in introduction stage the slow sales growth okay with little or no profit and what you do is that in this introduction stage with your high distribution meaning to say you try to distribute as many as possible okay with a lot of promotion so the expenses on you doing the advertisement promotion are very high because you want to first introduce the product to the public and you want to create awareness so that people know about your new product second stage which is the growth stage this is when sales increase tremendously and new competitors start to enter the market because your competitors will now see that hey, they have a new product we want to produce the same new product as well so that's when uh, your competitors also start to sell the same product like what you are selling uh, in the growth stage also price are started to stable okay perhaps some decline uh, uh, in price because you wanted to increase the volume okay sales volume next uh, consumer are getting understood about your product okay uh, because in the introduction they just get the idea of it and then okay whether I want to buy or not but then in what when it already enters the growth stage people already know about your product so they are uh, well versed about the product and that's when they start to buy a lot okay and then many people start to buy so your sales increase tremendously just now and profit also increase and your promotion and also manufacturing costs now started to gain the economies of scale the third stage which is the maturity stage huh? now during the maturity stage your sales are started to slow down okay and here you will see there are many suppliers of the product uh, what they call it components yeah or raw materials right and there are also increasing numbers of substitute products okay this makes that what makes your product sales started to slow down uh, and then as you already produce a lot right sometimes it leads to the overcapacity, which uh, then you need to be more competitive in a way that uh, you offer better price okay or a bundle or a value pricing strategy okay and you also start to do more promotion okay because you don't want the maturity stage to go to the decline stage that's why you do a lot more promotion or perhaps you um, get your product to be distributed to more locations all right and do R&D to support the sales and also the profits by do some improvement modification so you can actually relaunch that particular product so that people will see it from the new or fresh look of it okay and lastly the decline stage the decline stage is when company will start to see that the sales have started to go down you will not be getting a lot more profits anymore people no longer demanding for your product people don't feel like buying your product anymore okay so the company can start to think of whether should they maintain the product or not okay should they just harvest the product in a way they just uh, finish up all the stocks and then that's it or should they immediately stop or drop the product and no longer produce the product okay so um, typically company do not want to be in this decline stage because it's not profitable anymore meaning to say remember when you first started to produce that product you required to buy new machineries okay new technology and so on but then uh, after you have done buying all those uh, investment yeah the machines the technology that is so expensive and now you have to stop producing the product so that's why decline stage is the stage whereby people or companies would like to avoid from uh, entering into but of course it is inevitable meaning to say you can't avoid uh, your product to be in the decline stage A very good example is like this CD and also the um, the cassettes yeah so people no longer demand for this particular product CD also no longer demanded you know 
some of your new laptops also do not have CD slots, isn't it? Like why would, why would people want to buy CD nowadays, right? Um, people also don't buy the uh, CD players, right? Uh, because people now watch uh, movies from Netflix online, okay? And you don't keep your uh, documents or music on CD anymore because you can just download this from Spotify, from your iTunes, uh, Apple Store and so on, right? Not, it can be streaming online. So uh, these producers, okay, they need to think of other methods or other products to produce in order for them to be sustainable in the business. Lastly, some uh, additional product and also service con consideration, especially when you are producing the product internationally, sorry, um, marketing the product uh, internationally by selling it to different countries. Yeah, you need to determine what products and services to introduce in which country. And should you do some standardization or customization towards the product that you are selling? Should you just um, change or maintain the same packaging and also labeling? As well as by looking at the customs, the values and also the law in that particular country, whether you can sell that particular product and will that be product be acceptable throughout the whole country based on their customs which is the culture yeah, and also the value and also some political and legal aspect of it which is the law in that particular country so look at this particular example this kit kat um you don't see this kit kat uh, advertisement or kit kat packaging like this in malaysia because this is uh, customization packaging and also labeling of kit kat in japan Okay, even Coca-Cola also, you have to be very careful, yeah, especially those Muslim. Um, you don't simply buy Coca-Cola that are imported because some of those Coca-Cola contain alcohol. So when uh, Coca-Cola uh, sell their product, their drinks to Malaysian uh, market, they customize it, okay, they change the ingredients by not putting the alcohol, all right, and make it more sweet because uh, it suits the Malaysian taste of uh, we, we like some creamy and also um, sweet um, drinks right so that is when they do the customization all right so with that we finish chapter six i hope you all are able to understand and if you don't please get ready your questions for our live session so that i'll be able to uh, explain further to all of you okay thank you guys bye